you can't just say, hey, can you not sell that for me? I'm interested at five million, um, just give me a month. Nobody's gonna do that. Yeah. You, you need some sort of commitment and a letter of intent gets, gets that first step. All right, guys. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to How to Invest in Commercial Real Estate. This is episode 10, and my name is Braden Cheek with the Criterion Fund. I am joined by my co-hosts, Brian Duck and Joel Thompson. What is up? Welcome back. What's going on, guys? Um, today, we're going to dive into um, a letter of intent. So, you know, you've been interested in properties, you're underwriting them, you know, we're, we're digging in and we're ready to make an offer. You know, what do we do now? Yeah, I mean, this is an, an intimidating first step for new investors as they have done some research, they think they found a good deal, but having the courage to go ahead and put that first LOI out there sometimes is tough. Yeah. But, you know, the LOI is just a non-binding Word document that gets your interest to purchase, uh, you know, out there in front of that seller and let them, let them know. So people shouldn't be too afraid to do it because it's non-binding. If they mess something up, it can, it can be changed. Is that right? I mean... Yeah, it's not like a contract. Yeah, I mean, it's literally a Word document, guys. So we're talking about a Word document. It's non-binding. You're going to sign it, but it's it's not a, you know, a binding contract. And the general idea is you're talking to the broker. You're building this relationship with them. You know, this isn't just a surprise a, a broker gets. You're asking him questions. You're underwriting it. And you think you're getting close, right? You mm -hmm. think you're ready to offer. And that's when this document comes into play. And so generally, will the broker that you're working with will... Will he know all the details, maybe not all the details, but generally he'll, he'll know. It's not like you've talked about a price and you're going to go way under that. He, he pretty well knows what price and what details you're going to offer. Yeah, Joel, you may add on the, in on this, but I would think, you know, when I'm about to offer on a property, I'm calling the broker regularly, asking him, you know, where he thinks it's going to trade, where the market is expecting it to trade, how much interest he's got on that property, see how much competition I have. And then, you know, he may not know exactly where I'm going to come in, but there's probably a rough ballpark. And then, you know, when he sees the letter of intent, that's made probably when he, he sees the purchase price of the full time. Absolutely. So, you know, submitting the LOI is a little bit of a little bit of a game. It's game gamemanship because you're trying to set up that broker for the offer that isn't going to meet the seller's expectations. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of a game gamemanship going on there. You're trying to find out from the seller how much interest is in the property where the seller's expectations are. Is the seller gonna be flexible on his price? Uh, and then you're gonna to wanna to come in uh, lower on your letter of intent, uh, not only to see how much flexibility the seller has, uh, but also just give yourself some negotiating room. Yeah, and another big point I would think um, would be free negotiating. Um, you know, it, there may be this misconception that you know each side has these super expensive attorney teams and they're negotiating on this, uh, this on your behalf. But attorneys are super expensive. I mean, just one could bill you, you know, four hundred to a thousand dollars an hour, depending on how good or what part of the country you're in. And a letter of intent is free negotiation because that's just you bouncing ideas, bouncing offers off of the person. Hopefully, at the end of the letter of intent, you've come to an agreement on most of the important terms, and then you just hand this to your attorney and say, "Hey, we came up with the most important terms. Can you write this up in a contract, please?" And they'll be like, "Yeah, sure." Before a letter of intent. Brokers don't necessarily uh, appreciate or, or, or behave this way where you could say, hey, ask your, ask your seller if he's going to accept this price and then go back and forth verbally. Does that happen very much or this is pretty much how you want to make your first stop? There might be some, uh, a little bit of that, just finding out the information like you guys said, but pretty much this is how the negotiations happen. Yeah, you don't want to do too much verbally, even though you're trying to you're trying to feel where this first offer needs to go. You know, making the first offer could put you at somewhat of a disadvantage. So you're you're trying to gauge where you think you can get in, and then the the purchase price you're putting on this LOI, you know, is probably on the lower side of what you want. It's a negotiation. Um, it's just it it's it's important that you always have something written down, even though it's it's non binding, right? right? You want some sort of hey, you know, we just talked about this. You're going to need to give this to your attorney to prepare the contract. You're going to need it to give it to your investors to maybe show them you have a deal locked up. You may have to give it to a bank to show them um, that you're you've got this deal locked up because, you know, you can't just say hey, can you not sell that for me? I'm interested at five million. Um, just give me a month. Nobody's going to do that. Yeah. You need some sort of commitment and a letter of intent 
gets gets that first step. So for beginners that are unsure of themselves, is there a, is there a chance that you could submit an LOI and you're not uh, convinced yet you're going to purchase the property? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, what would be the benefits of submitting an LOI when you're not yet convinced? Gauging gauging the market, gauging how much competition is there, gauging how uh, you know realistic the seller is to your buying expectations. You've got expectations when you're offering on a property of where you think you can buy it at. You know what what purchase price makes your returns work. You know how realistic they are on the physical condition or the financial condition of the property. You may be on two different pages. I think it buys you time too, be, because you you still are probably going through the due diligence, and you don't want to spend all the time and effort if the seller isn't reasonable on price or isn't where you need them to be. So for me, the LOI it buys me time. Uh, to continue my due diligence and lets me know that, okay, the time I'm going to spend uh, is worth it because we're on the same page regarding price. Right. So I'm not always convinced when I submit the LOI, but submitting the OI, LOI will let me understand where the seller's at and if it's it's a reasonable price. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Tanner, just pull up the, the word doc real quick. It's, it's not complicated, guys. You can see you know, we'll pop in a logo. By the way, we're going to give this away. Um, so if you need an LOI or you want to look at this, just go to invest.howtoinvestincre.com, plug in your email, free download. We'll give it away. Feel free to use it. Um, I mean, it's a Word document. You'll see it when you get it. You plug in who it's going to, um, how you're sending it to them. You know, it, it says, hey, it's an, a letter of intent on this property. We're putting in a purchase price. We're putting in how long it's going to take us um, to buy that property, um, how much earnest money we're going to put up and, and we can do a deep dive into earnest money, but an earnest money check is essentially just this small refundable commitment that goes to a title company that just says, I have the wherewithal and you know, the means to buy this property. It says you're serious. Yeah. Um, another key component is the due diligence, uh, period. So the LOI, it defines price, it defines, uh, earnest money. And the other two really big, uh, things that it defines is how long do you get to tie this up in a contract? Uh, and do your due diligence and still have a chance to get out with your earnest money being refundable. Right. And that's called the due diligence period. That's, that's probably one of the keys of an LOI. And usually uh, industry standard is a 30 day look uh, and a 30 day close. So yeah, 30 no, days to why? evaluate it. Why is there only 30 days? Well, you know, obviously the seller doesn't want to give you infinite time. Mm -hmm. He wants to know as soon as possible, are you a buyer uh, or not? Yeah, and so, waste his time. Uh, you know, but you need time to do your property condition report, maybe an appraisal, a survey, things that let you know that, hey, this is what I, and do the lease reviews. This is a you know, property that, that I've inspected and I wanna proceed on. So that's the 30 days. Yeah, and a quick tip of advice is, um, you know, you've gotta craft this, uh, you know, you need to have experience. You know, sellers are not just gonna give you a free look at a property they know you can't afford. You know, if, if you're looking at this $50 million class A apartment complex in an amazing market and you have no experience, you have no website, you have no investors, you have no credit, they're going to, they're going to laugh. They're not even going to respond to your mm -hmm. letter of intent. So let's first make sure we're dealing in the realm of possibility. And then second of all, get a website, highlight your experiences, get, get some lenders, um, you know, get some rough pre-approvals and get some people around you to where you can go to this broker and say, Hey, you know, I may not have all the experience, but look what I have. I have the wherewithal to buy this property. I'm serious. I'm not going to waste your time and, and give them some commitment because at the end of the day, they want to sell their property and they just don't want to waste their time. That's right. And I, I remember when we first started, uh, we had uh, what I'll call professional lookers. They were submitting LOIs and, and going through due diligence and, and wasting time, but they really didn't have any intention of buying the property. And, and I wasted a lot of my time as a seller dealing with those guys. So uh, definitely you want to you want to present yourself as someone that can get the deal closed and that way your LOI gets taken seriously. Yeah, and I would say from, you know, a broker's perspective or maybe a seller's perspective, um, you know, if you've got a really hot asset that you're taking to market and you're trying to sell, you may field a dozen or 15 different letters of intent. You, you may, it, it may be very attractive. There may be people bidding against each other. And then you may do what's called a, a best and final. And, and that just says, hey, we've got a lot of offers, guys. We've got a lot of interest. Um, we're going to extend or, or put a, a, a final date on the when we're going to stop accepting letters of intent. And we need your best and final offer by, you know, this Friday, the 27th. And at that day, we're going to pick the best offer. 
typically they only take the top uh, three or four to that best and final round. That's a good point. Yeah. So, and it may, and it may be the, the highest price. It may be the best closer, someone that the broker has worked with and they know it is going to close on a deal. That's another really good point. It's, it's not always the price that gets you the deal. I mean, it could be terms. And, and it could be the fact that you've bought in, you know, 20 of those assets in that market over the past year or two, they know you're going to close on it. You don't, retrade or renegotiate the terms you don't back out of the contract that credibility that we mentioned earlier goes a long way when you're bidding on properties yeah definitely um so uh, just kind of going back to the loi real quick we'll, we'll scroll through um you know there's a few more points on where the title company is going to be you know kind of industry standards is buyer is picking where the title company is um and then it goes through on on who's providing what but the general idea of the letter of intent is that it's it's the most important points for you as a buyer. The most, you know, important 10, 12, 15, you know, I don't know how many points we have on here. We have 14. Okay. So our most important 14 points to say, hey, here's the price. Here's how long we're going to look at it. Here's who's going to provide what in the timeline. Here's the fees we want. Here's the closing timeline, all of that. And then if the seller's like, okay, yeah, all this works for me, they're going to sign that letter of intent. It's not binding. It's not a contract. We can't take that to the bank or a title company or a lender. But what we can do is we take that signed letter of intent, we give it to our attorney, and we craft a, a PSA or a purchase and sale agreement or a contract. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. You can, and the yeah, signed LOI gives both sides confidence to start spending money on the purchase and sale agreement. Yeah. Because uh, you generally agree. Um, another point I'll make on the LOI is that this is a pretty simple one, and I have used uh, a form just like this to buy, you know, tens of millions of dollars of commercial real estate. So you don't have to have a complicated one. There are complicated LOIs out there that that go over who pays for everything and what documents are going to need to be submitted. Um, you know, as a seller, I don't love seeing LOIs like that because they're they're trying to lock in too soon all of those points. Really good um, point. So you're welcome to use a complicated one. And, and maybe that saves you a little bit of time on the contract, on the purchase and sale agreement, fighting over those things. But for me, if you're going to be submitting a lot of LOIs, which you should be doing, uh, you should be testing a lot of sellers, seeing who is uh, more flexible on price. I would keep it simple, just like this. This, is, this has been very successful for us. Yeah, good point. yeah. I, I would agree. I think that's a great point. Um, simple is, is better when it comes to this. When you get an LOI, that's you know, 10, 15 pages, and you're negotiating on, on stupid points that are irrelevant at this point because you haven't decided on the price. purchase price yeah. or, you know, the inspection goes, timeline. Yeah, it goes a lot quicker. Yeah. And price and some of these these things are the most important things anyway, so. Exactly, and they're going to put on their, you know, three or four most important points as well and, you know, negotiate back and forth. But, you know, this is a good framework. And, and again, we're giving it away. Just go to invest.howtoinvestincre.com, type in your email, and it's free download. And, and change it up. I mean, put your logo in there, put put your few important points on. But we've bought in big deals, small deals uh, with this LOI. I mean, it, it, it doesn't really change much. Yeah, I would encourage people that are thinking about getting in the game, download this from us, get it for free, and uh, start start looking at deals and, and even send one in. Uh, you know, just break the ice a little bit because it'll be a little nerve wracking putting in an, an LOI for a property. But it's it's non-binding. It's just a learning experience. And sometimes, you know, you put a low LOI out there and the seller is like, no, or doesn't even respond. Right. But you're on their radar as someone that might be interested. And what happens over time is that sellers get more and more flexible. Right. Uh, so if it's not selling. If it's not selling, uh, I've had uh, brokers tell me, no, I leave the LOI out there. And then two, three months later, they have, maybe they got it under contract and someone failed to close. Uh, and then they go back through, well, who, who all was interested before? And they reach back out to me and they said, hey, is, is your offer still good? Are you still interested? And sometimes I am still interested. Sometimes I've moved on and I'm, I'm buying another deal. Uh, but you, this game is a numbers game and you've got to be uh, slinging uh, LOIs, preferably on the low end, not maybe disrespectful, but testing sellers. And the worst they can say is, is no. Right. And then you just say, hey, hey, broker, I'm sorry, this is going to be a low LOI. I'm, I'm just working really hard to get a, a good deal. And I understand if your seller doesn't take it. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. And I wouldn't feel uh, self-conscious about it. Right. 
Brian and I this past year probably did that on $50 million worth of retail shopping centers and good markets just because coronavirus hit and we we're like, man, this asset class is getting pummeled. We believe in it, that it'll come back in a good enough market in a good enough location. Right. And we slung LOIs on gorgeous properties for super cheap and it wasn't insulting. We would, we would have bought them. We would have committed to our purchase price, right? right? But they were just too low for the seller to take. And, and to Joel's point, you've got to be out there not only underwriting the deals like we've mentioned, but you, you've got to be offering on deals. And this free LOI will get you instant credibility. I, I've seen this used for lease deals from a tenant from a thousand square feet to, you know, bigger, uh, 20,000 square feet. You, you can use it for uh, property purchases or sales. I mean, it's, it's super flexible and you just add in those few points. One, uh, one last point for, for beginners, because we're, we're trying to get them motivated to take the step is what if you, you found a property that you thought was good and you, you put a low LOI out there and for some reason, uh, the seller's interested and they're going to take it, but you don't have the ability to close. That's okay because if it's a good LOI, if it's at a good price, that's valuable to somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's valuable to us. Uh, you, bring, you bring me the deal and say, hey, Joel, I think this is under market. Partner with me on this deal. Uh, so you can partner or you can just sell the contract, right? You can sell that, that LOI or, or even take it all the way to contract and sell that to a, uh, a real estate uh, owner in your, in your market. So there's some value to, uh, to finding that deal and getting that seller to a good price. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, you know, the LOI is the big first step in offering. You know, it's, it's one of the documents that people are like, you know, oh my gosh, I don't know how to create it. Where do I get one? What, whatever, we're gonna give you ours free, invest.howtoinvest in CRE.com. Download it, let us know what you think. Um, and hopefully somebody starts buying yeah. some properties with it. Alrighty, guys. Well, I think that wraps it up for episode 10. Um, thanks for listening, watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in a few days. Thanks.